You know, there's nothing like cracking that, that cellophane and pulling that record out. It just smells great. Welcome to Buzz Mayhem Hour. Non-stop hardcore energy. I love the show, guys. You're awesome. Unlike any other. With your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Man, this stuff rocks. Hey guys, this is Marcel from Solon. This is Bod's Mayhem Hour. The views and opinions of the guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bod's Mayhem Radio Network, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Radio Network. Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I'm your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. the Bod Father. And as always, I'm bringing you guys and gals awesome interviews. Today, it's an honor and a very huge privilege to welcome Marcelo Aries of Sullen. Sullen has released their album, Notice Tolan's Act One Oblivion. Also check out videos, The Mounder, which is uh, a track off the band's debut album, Post Human. And uh, it was captured live at the Stone Sound Studio on August 9th of 2020. Other videos you want to check out are Memento, uh, The Prodigal Son, and Acaranto Movebo. Oh, I did it pretty good there. How about that? <laughs> I'll say it one time and not twice. But uh, anyway, <laughs> we got Marcelo back on the show and uh, going to be talking to him about all this stuff about Sullen. So, Marcelo, how you doing, man? Great, John, and thank you for having me. Not a problem whatsoever, my friend. So uh, let's talk about this a little bit. Uh, how excited are you to to get out and do some shows, play some local stuff? Because it's not really, is it, is it still locked down over there or is it kind of letting up? Yeah, man, it's kind of letting up, you know, slowly but steady because we're getting everyone vaccinated. So we're trying to do our best not to get too contaminated, you know, and get the numbers getting higher and higher like some other cases around the world. But I think we're getting there. They just lifted, in some of the states over here, the mask mandate, which is very cool. So hopefully, yeah. you know, that's that's a good sign. Um, so we may get back to normal if we can call it normal as before. You know what I mean? So hopefully. Yeah, I think, I think for at least in the hygiene department, you know, there's going to be a lot of changes from now on. But I think that's for a good cause, man. Uh, there's a lot of infections, you know, viruses rolling around uh, every day. And that's a way to kind of control it, you know. But the issues with the distance, you know, the the masks, that kind of stuff, uh, that will be cool to, to go away, man. Because it's really tough to have concerts to be playing, to be doing whatever you want, you know, and having to get, like, this huge distance be between the people and having all this max, all that kind of stuff rolling uh, when you just want to have a good time, you know? Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Now, did you find yourself doing anything differently other than just working on music, such as like collecting or catching up on anything, or was it just strictly let's get this album out and, and get it out and spread to the masses? Yeah, I was mostly focused on music-related stuff, uh, uh, because I'm also a, a drum teacher and uh, I give a lot of uh, lessons, drum lessons. Uh, the only difference uh, was that uh, I, I mostly focused on Portugal in terms of students. Uh, but then, as uh, as we had a lot of time in our hands and I tried to to work everything around uh, uh, this this old Skype and Zoom things, you know, and try to spread the word as much as possible to reach for everyone interested in doing this kind of stuff and have the privilege to work with a lot of people from all parts of the world, you know, from Africa, from South America, from other parts of Europe. Uh, no, no one from the United States, but I, I get it because the, the <laughs> it's tough to, 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 to get it all spread for everyone, you know, but it was cool to to know a little bit about uh, other kind of cultures, you know, all that kind of stuff. And also I had time to develop my own thing, my my own practices, to draw again, because I also like to, to do it, uh, to listen, listen to a, a lot of music, you know, and just to chill, to chill out a little bit, you know, breathe some fresh air. 
try yeah. to to stay cool. Yeah, just, just to take a step back and and just relax and and do stuff that you want to do and not be on a fast paced scale all the time. Yeah, exactly. It's cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> How does it feel to see all these people, especially little kids, man, who are wanting to take up drums and take drum lessons, man? What do you see in these kids, man, when, you, when you're watching them play and, and learning from what you're teaching them? Uh, I'm always learning with, uh, with my students, you know, because there's a lot of steps when you want to focus on some department and so, or some uh, work, specific work, you know. And there's a lot of layers to it, uh, both uh, like the musical stuff the professional stuff and also the personal stuff, you know, and when you, you deal with music and any kind of art, you know, there's a lot of personal stuff going, you know, and, 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 and sometimes you, you get it like as a means to, to, I don't know, to, to expose the person to other kinds of sensibilities, you know, even like playing this huge and noisy instrument like the drum set, you know, you sweat a lot, you eat a lot, you know, you eat all the stuff and, uh, and, and, and you try to expel all your demons whenever you can, you know. <laughs> so it's, it's really cool on that side. And, um, and it's also a good way to, to, to challenge the people to, to be a, a lot more aware of the intricacies of the of the music itself, you know, because nowadays we live in a reality where the the people tend to the attention span tends to be a lot, but like by a huge margin. Uh, that w it was like I don't know, maybe like ten or fifteen or twenty years ago, you know, when you went to the the record store, buy all the records, and then spent like all your free time, like listening to everything you got, you know, just uh, making sure you get like some more money to pick some more new music, you know, and nowadays it's always like, it's always like, like really, really fast, you know, like pa -pa 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 -pa, you can get like in touch with everything that they, they, they throw at you. And this way it's really cool because you, you keep the pace down, you know, and try to 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 make them like focus on every detail regarding the the music uh, department you know and it's really cool to to bring that kind of awareness to people you are exactly right man it's like the mystique of going and getting the magazines back in the day from Hit Parade or Circus Magazine, Rip, stuff like that to keep up yeah. with your favorite band is gone and just like you said it's like you know everything has to be now you know, you put something out, what, what's next? It, there's no, like, hey, take this in, and then we'll come out with something later. You know, and it's just like, what What about now? Now, 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 now. So Yeah. If you remember, uh, we usually go went to the to the stores, and some of the times, you know, you, you couldn't get the previews, the audio previews for the, the CDs that you uh, were curious about, you know, and you just, like, choose them through their cover designs, you yeah. know, yeah. kind of stuff and it, it was like it was always a journey you know some better some worse you know but it was always like really cool man mm -hmm. the sense how, of discovery it's amazing how does it feel to have this new album notice tolan's in the solon music library right now man how does it feel for you guys to finally have this out and for me, it's like a huge release off my shoulders, you know, because um, uh, for me, especially because I, I took part in this kind of division uh, from the old uh, Solon and the new Solon, uh, the old Solon with uh, the uh, different lineup with different people. And nowadays with this crew that we have uh, and that function that works like amazingly well, like every freaking time it's uh it's a lot different to work on and to try to bring out this release for me is very special because um i i compose like practically everything that you can hear on that record uh and for me specifically since i went from that previous phase to the next one was really tough because the music itself was composed a long time ago like i i started working on this the songs for the for this album like in 2015, 2016. And I think by the end of 2016, I had the mostly, I don't know, maybe 
half of them like completely worked out. And uh, but I took a lot of years, you know, just to get the right lineup to do it because the, the other guys were like professionally, I don't know, focused on uh, other things. Then we 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 just like deviated uh, paths. Um, and and all this, we have the opportunity to finally have the right lineup to do it, record it, and release it. It's just amazing, man. But we're already working on a ton of new music because <laughs> we we had a, a lot of time to think about everything. Oh, I would imagine so. And, and going back from, what, 2015 to 2016, that's a long time to sit there on these songs and then to have COVID come in and just take it away and you can't tour. That even had to be a big setback, too. So, I mean, when you get the tour, you're going to have this album plus maybe some newer stuff to add to the uh, to the lineup. So... You know, that's this is a blessing, but it's not a blessing because COVID's hurt a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, for sure. Because uh, I think we 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 just we're just in a, a kind of a limbo, you know, in terms of performance. Because uh, we really want to spread the word and take our music to as many people as possible. But with this, we're like postponing the inevitable uh, because we're we're hoping to play this album, these songs live for as much time as we can. But as you said uh, correctly, uh, we, when, when, when that time comes, we, we, we will have more stuff rolling for sure, you know, and we're, we're going to have like this huge will to, to, to bring it out too. So I don't know how, to, uh, how it will be, you know, uh, by the end, but I don't know. For now, I just wish to uh, for an opportunity to take this take this out, take this around the world, and have a a blast doing it with my crew. What has this new lineup brought to Sullen that may have been missing? Possibly is this lineup more hungrier than maybe say the previous lineup? Possibly, maybe. Yes, I would say that because the one of the issues with the old lineup was that uh, not everyone in the band was like uh, 100% devoted to, to music, both personally and professionally. They, they did uh, some other things. They had like the, the normal, if you can say so, jobs, you know. And uh, nowadays we have a lineup that's like uh, whole body and mind uh, dedicated to, uh, to music, you know. Uh, we're performers, we, we're session musicians, you know, producers, uh, teachers. So there's a lot to do uh, with this will to, to have the, the most stable, stable collective that you can get uh, to bring out the best possible music. And uh, for that, uh, we, we needed some balance. And that's why uh, David, the vocalist, and Andre, the uh, and Andre, no, the Ricardo, the the bass player, came to to the picture. Uh, nowadays, we also like discarded the the our one of the founding uh, guitarists. We have uh, like uh, uh, a young but very very inspiring uh, new guitar player there. That's like like a, a guest guitarist, if you can say so. Uh, is also working pretty damn well with with all of us. But um, yeah, uh, I think for for to 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 get this this vision, this idea in shape, we really needed people that, that devoted that themselves to the to the craft, and that didn't happen before. What's impressed or excited you the most about working on this new album, if anything, man? What what sticks out the most for you, possibly? I think the the most impressive thing that came to fruition and with, uh, it was really amazing uh, was that we uh, with, with this lineup, with this new lineup, with those all, all, all these these people involved, we had the opportunity of producing everything by ourselves. You know, I think just the uh, drum recordings, uh, yeah, just that was uh, recorded like in a. a a particular place, you know, the Sunstone Studio, where we recorded the Akronto Movevo live video and also the Mounder. Um, but besides that, we we composed, we arranged, we we mixed, we mastered, with we 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 took care of the the CD prints, you know. So yeah, 
was nice to have this kind of control over everything. So do you like that though, to have the time to do that yourself and not be under like a deadline or be, be pressured on this? Do you, do you like this side of, of the music or would you actually like to have a producer down the road? Maybe. Uh, yeah, I, I think, I think that w- could work out with us, but the thing is we're all very, uh, production driven, you know, all, we all have like this, this vision, this concepts behind our approach to music and the way we want it to sound. Uh, so even if that, I don't know, maybe sometime we have, um, a producer working with us, we're going to be like on top of everything, working very, very closely to him or her, uh, to get everything the way we, we really want. And for us, and during this, 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 this perilous times, you know, with COVID and everything was nice to have all the time of the world to do everything we needed. Yeah. And especially when you have a band member who can produce albums like this, like you guys just did with Ricardo, that's, that's pretty cool actually to have that in house. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. It's a, it's an amazing, he's the amazing producer, an amazing musician is a multi-instrumentalist that, uh, is 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 actually a, a very very good classical and jazz pianist, but it's is it, is also playing like uh, electric guitar in one of our our like side projects, and of course he rips everything playing bass in solo and produces like this monstrosity that you that you can hear in uh, No the Soul. And so we're very very glad we have him in our team. Any tracks standing out more to you than any right now on the album? I know it must change every time you listen to it because these are your babies, Marcelo. But do you have any that, that stand out for you? Uh, it's it's tough, man. Um, but uh, because they 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 all have a a very different meaning. Uh, maybe the the maybe Memento would have to be the one that speaks for me the most, you know, because he, he talks a lot about some of my experiences, uh, back in the days, like high school days when, when I was developed my personality and all that kind of stuff, the things that I've seen that I felt the traumas and all that kind of stuff, you know, uh, those turmoils. Um, but in terms of, I don't know, maybe, Thinking about a, a a a song that we or or spe- specifically me uh, wants to to play live, I would say like maybe Human in that department. Was there a song that you were working on that totally ended up sounding different than it was intended to? I mean, was there one that took a totally ch- a different change than it was brought to the table? No, no, because um, uh, we, as I said before, we think about every freaking detail you can think of uh, uh, during the, the the composing and the arrangement process processes. You know, uh, specifically me or mostly me in this in this particular record. But um, but yes, even in terms of sound, the when we we actually went to record the final product, everything was almost in the the right spot. Of course, there's always one detail here and there, some things that you add up, but uh, mostly like like really infinite details, you know, like mm. tiny, tiny little things. Was there any songs that didn't make this album that we could see down the road on an EP or another album, or, or no, are these just ones that you just put out and be done with them? Yeah, that, that, that's... Uh, the, the the funny thing about this record is that uh, we actually have like the second half of it, the act two, like I like 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 mostly finished. You know, we're just like recording some extra stuff, acoustic stuff, uh, but it's mostly like ready, ready to go. So uh, yeah, we <laughs> we we decided in the, in the, I think in the the. the the first time we th- we thought about uh, the release form, you know, um, we thought about uh, releasing everything. We had like 16 songs or something like that. Uh, we still have, of course, but uh, now the first eight are released in the form of Act One. And, uh, 
And I think the, the rest will be uh, in the form of Act 2 that we reveal uh, very, very soon, <laughs> as soon as we can. So let's see how everything unfolds. See, that's what I'm talking about. This pandemic has been good for bands because they can work on a lot more stuff. And I'm really anxious to see how much songs come out after this. But, you know, just as well as I do, because you're a musician, these songs may not even come out because we're in a, we'll be in a different time frame with that, if that makes sense, you know, in a different zone, I should say. Because yeah. every song that is left sometimes don't make it because they're just in different places these guys are. Yeah, I, I, I've been thinking about that lately because, yeah, starting to feel that way, you know, like, uh, like I don't know, it's, it's like a nostalgia trip. It's really cool because you remember all the processes, you know, all the things that you thought about when you, when, when for me, for example, I, I wrote uh, most of that stuff. And uh, and nowadays I'm just like mostly looking to the future, you know, and aiming for new stuff to create more stuff. And that starts to, to the old stuff starts to 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 get a, a little bit of dust, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? And you when you get back to it, you just feel like okay. Uh, uh, I don't know how, 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 how it's cool because it works. Uh, it's it's it, uh, we did our best to 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 get it like sounding the way that we really really want it. But even so, uh, it feel it feels a, a little bit out of not of not out of place, but out of time. You know. What do you hope everyone takes away? Your message you hope they hear while listening to this album or any of Solon's music in general, Marcelo? What do you hope they get from it? Oh, uh, inspiration, man! Most of all, you know, to get inspired to, you know, to 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 open themselves to all kinds of life's experiences, you know, uh, human experiences, social experiences, to enjoy life as much as they can. But because the 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 message on Solon is is all, it talks a lot about that, you know, it's always about renewal, you know, discarding the old stuff, the, the bad stuff to, that you went through or maybe went through, uh, and try to, to 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 give your best to 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 enjoy your life as much as you as you can, you know. Does it kind of take you guys back, though, when somebody comes to you and say, hey, this song made an impact on me and it, it helped me through a difficult time? If that's happened, man, what goes through your mind when you're told that? That's the most amazing gift that anyone can give us, you know, because we try to share our our experiences with them through uh, this kind of, like, uh, abstract sometimes, uh, lyrics and and human concepts and ideas and all that kind of stuff and to feel that we could uh, add like uh, an end on someone's life uh, experience just to 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 uh, help them overcome some troubles that they're having it's like really really nice because I also had like songs. Uh, and and pieces of music throughout my life that really helped me during my my most like depressing depressive days, you know, uh, the times that I was like my mind was all over the place, you know, and and I I I, I, f- I could find some comfort in the music that I really enjoyed, and uh, the words spoke like monuments to me. So what albums or songs you had to have, man? Me especially. I, there's albums I can't go without listening to each other week. You know what I mean? So what yeah. what was it for you? What what albums did you have that you had to listen to every other week possibly? Oh, man, that's a very tough question. I don't know. Uh, because I, I, I have a, a ton of music that I, I listen to or I try to listen to every day. Uh and I'm speaking like uh, things that I brought with me for like over a lot of years now. Um, but I think I'm going to speak like for for artists, uh, not specific albums, because I tend to listen to a lot of stuff from a specific artist when I really connect with them. So I would say like uh, the Opet stuff was always like uh, uh, a go 
to me and uh, a lot of progressive stuff. I really enjoyed all the discography from Textures, a band from the Netherlands. Uh, I don't know, man. But I also find myself returning to the to, to good old days of progressive rock, symphonic rock, like Jethro Tull, Yes, Camel, and all that kind of stuff. And I, I don't know, man. I, I, I can't spend like a month without listening to it. So it's a, it's a very tough question. <laughs> <laughs> very, very tough. Marcelo, how can folks stay in touch with you guys, buy this album just to say hello or buy some new merchandise, tour dates, all that good stuff? How can he do that? Okay, you can find us uh, on all social media. Uh, just search for Soul and PT. You can also check out our Bandcamp, soulandpt.bandcamp.com. Uh, when you where you can have like uh, all the digipacks, bundles, merchandise, whatever, and you, you can support the band, and we really really appreciate it. And also uh, you can check check out our our official website www.solen.pt for everything regarding the band. And before I let you go, good sir, would you care to do a promo for my show? Because I see you're sitting on the drum kit there. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, this is Marcel from Sullen. This is Bod's Mayhem Hour. <laughs> Everybody stick around. we got some great, great stuff coming up, and you only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour and Bod's Mayhem Hour podcast. Please get out and check out our Facebook page. It has our podcast link and our YouTube link, and you definitely want to subscribe to the YouTube link because we've got lots of things coming down the pipe for Bod's Mayhem Hour. Also, get out and pick up Solon's Notice Tolan's Act 1, Oblivion. It's already out right now, and you definitely, definitely want to check out their singles, Memento and The Prodigal Son. Yeah, check their stuff out. You will not be disappointed. Sullen has a uh, good, good sound, and you don't want to sleep on this band. So, Marcelo, thank you so much for this interview again, and uh, I wish you guys nothing but the best of luck. <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.